Hey, thanks. Thanks for coming today. You all look lovely. We have a little thing planned at the end, so I just want you to, I want to plant that seed in your mind. It, it involves all of you. I know. Be scared. Great. So, yeah, you know, I, I was going to title this lecture, Let's Just Take a Shower, but we instead had to put mapping in the title. I, I wasn't aware of that. I also wanted to title it The Philosophy of Fitting the Square Peg in the Round Hole, which is really deep. Um, but, inst <laughs> but instead, it's, it's called Mapping with Wits, you know, and my last name is Horowitz. It's so stupid. I apologize <laughs> for that. <laughs> it, was, it was really, really dumb. But hopefully my talk won't be that stupid. Um, so I guess I just, you know, I've, ma I've made a living by basically organizing micro communities around these absurdist principles that I come up with. And... Um, it's almost a, a type of reality hacking. Um, you know, it's, 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 I guess I'll just start by saying I, I'm just graduating from USC with a master's of fine art. Worthless degree, excuse me. But, you know, it was given to me and I, I took it. It was, it was like it being in an intellectual sweat lodge for two years, it was awful. And I've, I've never hated myself so much in my life. So uh, just last night I finished this thesis paper, 25 pages of, of talk, it's called The Extraordinarily Ordinary, Tableau, Anxiety, and Montage. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to bore you with the 20 pages of defining tableau, which is so crazy and it's ridiculous. Um, but I'll, I'll, cut, I'll cut to the end of the paper. And, and, and basically, I, I kind of get all hippie and, and uh, new agey. Um, some of you may appreciate that in, in, in a real way. Um, my, yes, we, we, one person, thank you. My, my mom and you should talk. She, she has a lot of crystals and things. Um, <laughs> so, sorry to reduce new age to crystals. Um, I guess you can do that. Uh, okay, so at the end, I basically, uh, David Foster Wallace is, is who I, I, I went into. I, many of you maybe know him. Yes, he had a speech that he delivered in, in Kenyan University in 2005 called This is Water. And basically, there are these, th these fish that are swimming along, you know, doing their thing. And then this bigger, older fish swims through, and he's like, morning, boys. How's the water? And then they swim off, and they're a little confused. And one of them turns to the other fish, and he's like, what's water? And, and th the point of this <laughs> is that we constantly forget, like, what is in plain sight. And, and it's hard for us to talk about it or realize it. Uh, an example, like you, you're driving on the freeway and you spill your coffee because the guy in front of you, you know, puts his brakes on. And then this is, has to happen to everybody. Tea, maybe, whatever, beer. I don't know what you drink in your car, <laughs> but <laughs> something. And so, you know, rather than getting upset, you can look at it and say, oh my God, wow, that looks like Canada, you know. And then you have a conversation piece for the rest of the day. You have Canada on your shirt, you know. A or maybe his, his, his car looks like a clog. And then you can imagine, lots of cars look like clogs to me. And then you can imagine the world uh, of a place where uh, everyone's driving wooden clogs. And, uh, and then you can kind of spin out and think, oh, well, what if there were wooden spinner rims? Wouldn't that be awesome? You know, like what about the Amish with some wooden spinner rims? You know, whatever. I mean, you can just trail down this line as far as you want to go. And I guess that's the point, you know, rather than reaching this boiling point and, and, and being upset at this guy. I mean, maybe he's taking his daughter to the hospital. You, you really have no idea. I mean, the point is that you constantly have to remind yourself that this is water, that you're in water, that you, you know, the, 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 the reality around you is, is, is what you make of it, you know, essentially. So there was this other artist, Stephen Kaltenbach, who in the summer of 1969 took an ad out in art form, and it simply read, Become a Legend. And I, I think that's amazing. And uh, I think, you know, <laughs> here comes the hippie part. <laughs> if, if I were, if, if I were to, to, to take out an ad in, in, say, the New York Times or whatever, or, or online or wherever, I think it would say the world is a place of infinite possibilities. Now, I mean, that sounds so cheesy. I mean, I feel like a life coach up here <laughs> with you all. But, I mean, uh, you know, I, I think that, that that has been sort of my mantra, you know. I, I left home very early. I left home at 15, and um, that was quite an experience. Uh, oh my God! I used to sell beer. Uh, I had a fake ID at 15, and I would sell beer to all the high school students, 
uh, that was my job. But I had a cover-up job at Arby's. <laughs> so like, so yeah, I was making a lot of money at Arby's, you know. Um, oh yeah, definitely. It was like that. It was it was really funny. I was in the middle of Indiana, uh, and then one day, I, Zima just came out. And I was like, yeah, I can drink it in my car because it's like water. And then I had it like uh, in my trunk at the football game. And uh, I was trying to sell it out of my trunk. And uh, somebody alerted the police of this. And then they came to my car. And they're like, sir, can you open your trunk? And then I ran away from my car, which was amazing. Um, <laughs> so stupid. And then I'm, I'm running. And then I'm realizing, like, oh, yeah, they have my fucking car. <laughs> And then the moment I stop, I turn around, I get tackled by three cops. And, you know, so that was the end of that experience. So that was a tangent. But yeah, sorry. <laughs> it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. <laughs> Don't sell beer when you're underage. <laughs> Perfect. Don't tell Zima. Well, yeah, be very specific. Um, but then I embezzled some money from a parking garage and went to Europe. Yeah, whatever. So that's a longer story. Uh, Okay, so let's just cut to, you know, it was 2000, I think it was 2005, and I was working for Crate and Barrel. Uh, everybody knows what that is, and every catalog is in everyone's re public restroom everywhere. Um, and we were, I don't know, we were in Chicago, and there was this little dry erase board, and they asked me to write something on it. And so I wrote Dinner with Mark and put my cell phone number on this board, and it was photographed. And then months later, I'm, I'm, I'm in... Northern California, I think in cool California, and I just gotten done researching Black Bard, who was a guy who used to rob uh, Wells Fargo stagecoaches, whatever. <laughs> and <laughs> with that, I don't know, I thought I was like really doing some cool research, you know, just doing my part. And uh, <laughs> so it was dumb. Uh, but cool California, I think, is actually like one of the meth capitals of California, which is awesome name for that place. I get a call, and it's this guy, Jake, from Overland Park, Kansas. Anyone from Overland Park? Perfect. Uh, okay, <laughs> sweet. Represent. Um, so, Jake, if you're watching, it's for you. Uh, and, and, you know, he's like, oh, y who is this? And I was like, this is Mark, you know. Oh, I got your number out of this catalog. And I was like, oh, shit. And so, it <laughs> and then... <laughs> I was like, okay, cool, man. I mean, it was, it was, you know, I told everybody on set that if it gets printed, I'll take whomever it is that calls me out to dinner in their hometown. Sure. So then I get like 30 more calls, then 40 more calls. And then this, you know, uh, Jason Kotke from Kotke.org picked up the story, published it. Then the New York Observer published it. And then I got two representatives, one from the Good Morning America and one from the Today Show at my front door fighting over which, sh you know, me to be on their show. I'm like, this is so awkward. And then I, <laughs> I ended up showing up in my first interview in the suit that I bought, a uh, three-piece wool suit on my you know, travels studying Black Bart. Um, <laughs> so I'm in this fucking wool suit sweating, and I, have, I, I had the great idea of attaching these grapes to, to, to it, hoping that the interviewer would reach over and grab one and eat one. <laughs> it was like, that did not happen, and I looked like a total asshole. <laughs> So don't ever wear food. So <laughs> don't sell Zima in your car. Don't wear food on your fucking jacket. <laughs> Anyhow, so then this thing just kept exploding because I kept giving my phone number out. And so I, I got something like 30,000 calls. I don't know. It was like you would just, I would just pick up my phone and, and, and answer. And it was like a snapshot of America almost at the time. I mean, I had like a horse auctioneer called me and wanted to teach me how to do auctioneering and this woman wanted to report on racism in the South, and I got invited to probably 20 weddings. I got eight marriage proposals. Um, people would call me and be like, well, just come on over. You know, we live on this island in Vancouver, and the keys are just on top of the door, and you just let yourself in, and we'll meet you there. And I was <laughs> what? So, so I ended up selling all of my stuff and then buying this stupid RV with a gas leak, so I remained high for a, a good year. <laughs> and I'm probably good some kind of tumor up there. Uh, <laughs> and, and then I, I met these people and had dinner with them, you know. So I would go to their hometown, and then I would, I would sometimes forget to tell them that I needed to stay there in my RV and run power to their house, you know, thereby bringing property values down immediately and, and alerting all the neighbors of a creepy dude living in an RV that smells like gas, you know. But... I mean, I guess I felt like that was a, you know, that was in my my introduction to reality hacking and 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 sort of using this corporate 
machine to vehicle my own artistic pro endeavor. Um, so I traveled around the country and had dinner with these people. And then I came back and I was, I got the, uh, I had a residency in, in, in Jurassic, the guy who invented the birth control pill has an artist residency because his daughter committed suicide, so he feels bad and now gives money to artists, I think. Sorry, <laughs> it's kind of morbid. <laughs> so anyhow, so I'm on this and I, I get a fax because we don't even ha we don't have anything out there. I get a fax from ICM wanting my life rights and I'm like, whew, what's that? Yeah, that's interesting. And then, I, long story, I moved to LA and, and then I start uh, getting into our entertainment and then I'm asked to do these art shows in, in Europe based on this project. and. So then I become this artist and this entertainer at, at once. And um, I shot a pilot for E! Network, and it was, oh my god, I, I'm sorry, E! Sorry. Uh, I, I did the sci-fi spelling bee, and then did this, oh, it was just awful. It was an awful, awful product. And, and so I thought that I was done, and whatever. I wasn't. So I had this great idea that I, I wanted to finally define myself, uh, because I never had a signature in my entire life. I'd always just scribble. And I was like, I need a signature, I need one. And so I designed a signature and then tried to then go around and pitch this idea of uh, signing the map of the United States and then driving my route, uh, driving the route across America, improving towns along the way. And it took me about three years to, to get this realized, but it's perseverance, people. It's <laughs> and I got funded to do this. Um, and then I, I started here in LA and basically, I went around and picked up a bunch of free stuff on Craigslist, and uh, and then I had a garage sale and sold all this stuff, <laughs> and then I took, <laughs> which is it's a genius idea. <laughs> Why not? Uh, it was really funny. If you're if you're a free Craigslister, you'll meet the weirdest crowd, man. The two boat three people show up at the same time, and you just like square off, you know. You gotta run over and touch it, you know. It's mine, and so that's how it works. <laughs> Trust me. Um, <laughs> that was there. Uh, and, and so then I, I took the money, and it was at the time when uh, LA's taco trucks were under fire, and they were going to cancel them all. And so I donated the money to my local taco truck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was like, you're so good. I love your tacos. You can't go away. And then I went to uh, Na uh, Nampa, Idaho, which is one of the friendliest cities in America. And I had this great idea of sectioning off a part of the park and, and establishing the very first anonymous semi-nudist colony. And what, the, what does this mean? It means that you put a ski mask on and <laughs> shed some clothes. <laughs> and so you're anonymous and you can either take your shirt off or your pants off, so you're semi-nude. Be legal and be free, you know. And so it was funny, people did it. The woman took her shirt off, you know, some old lady just kicked her shoes off and you know, I tried to convince this guy to take his watch off, and he wouldn't even do that. But <laughs> it's like, all right, um, guy took his pants off and was bouncing on the trampoline. That was interesting. Um, and then I went on to to bury uh, a town's problems in Craig, Colorado. Um, so I just dug a, a plot, a hole, and then people. I, I took some ads out in the local paper, and they would bring their problems and throw them in there. And like this guy brought his shoes that he, he had. He's like, I hate these shoes. They pinch, my, they pinch my feet. I wore them at Kmart. And then he also bought Rocky. I was like, what? And so he's like, I hate this movie. <laughs> and then it's like, I was like, fine, dude. <laughs> Some dude, of course, brought a hatchet. And he's like, I want to bury the hatchet. And real clever. <laughs> it's about as bad as the title of this lecture. Sorry. And then... Uh, then I went on and tried to sell Mormons uh, in Ogden, Utah uh, on the concept of poop shoes, which are uh, basically these little things that you step in for w if you're working in a clean room, but I recalled them poop shoes. So when you're in a multi-stall bathroom and you're pooping, nobody can tell it's your shoes, so you're never embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then I, I worked through this whole concept with them, and I'm like, it's going to give you confidence, and the more confidence you have, the more, the more money you can make. And the more money you make, the more food you're going to eat, the more you're going to poop. And they're just like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? And so that, that was a failed attempt. Yeah, just thinking about that. Made a commercial for my high school. That was awesome. Um, <clears throat> and then after that, whatever, you know, I did that. That was fun. Uh, and then more reality hacking, you know. And, and then I, I sort of... I had this idea, I think it was a few years ago, 
where uh, I wanted to take a summer trip. And, and my friend and I, he was on the East Coast in Virginia, and I was here. We didn't have any money. We're broke constantly because we're artists. Awful. And uh, so basically we had this great idea of taking a virtual road trip. So we got on Ustream, and um, we used this program called Cam Twist to do live chroma key. And so there's one person with uh, a green screen behind him, or him, yeah, because there's two hymns involved. I was trying to be politically correct at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, what's wrong with me? <laughs> two hymns. Um, he, he does take shabbats, though. I don't know if you guys know what shabbats are. It's when you take a shower, but you lay down <laughs> in the bathtub. <laughs> Uh, anyhow, I learned that on this road trip. <laughs> so, so, so be basically behind me was was the screen, which was the map. So you zoom in all the way in Google Maps, and then you press the arrow keys to traverse across the country. And so, you know, at this time that we are in, in this day and age, the the internet, the wireless, provides us with about 50 to 60 miles an hour uh, during the heavy traffic hours of the internet. And then when it's later at night, you're going 70 or 80. Uh, and so, you know, I think it took us eight hours to get, or eight days to get across the country, uh, roughly nine, because we, we would stop basically in the Grand Canyon. We would find a place to set up a tent, <laughs> and then we would just like play flicker images behind us of the Grand Canyon and vi people's videos. And so we experienced the entire country through, through you know, other people's pictures and videos. Um, we went to Graceland. Uh, we would, you know, the, since we did it live, there were some audience members that were on, on the way. And then we'd stop at their house through Google Street View and pick them up. And then they would give us a guided tour of their neighborhood. Uh, I mean, it was awesome. Yeah, but I mean, you know, that could be a great idea for, you know, people that, uh, that can't travel, you know, or, 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 or like, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, I guess anyone can travel. <laughs> but, but for, you know, like a classroom that wants to go to India or something and they can't go, and so they could just travel virtually through Google Maps and, I don't know. Anyhow, we had these grand ideas. Nothing ever panned out. Um, and then I, I recently did this project called The Advice of Strangers, um, where I lived my entire life uh, according to The Advice of Strangers. So I'd post questions, and people would be able to vote on what I'd do. Um, and I mean, it was so crazy. I ended up on Echo Park Lake, on an air mattress, with underwear on my head, with two holes cut out for my eyes, and two marshmallows glued to my chin. So yeah, that's where the advice of strangers. Uh, yeah, I know it's so specific. So that's where that's where I ended up. It really did. I was like, yeah, this is awesome. You guys are really creative. It was, it was you know, mandated by a six-year-old, but that's okay. It's totally fine. He was included. Um, you know, I did a fashion show for one of the neighbors who had never who wanted to get into fashion. She's never done an event. She's never had her fashion. It was a bit of a train wreck. Um, but then. I also wanted to do a play, so we did a play. I lived next to a halfway house, so that was the entire audience. Uh, it got <laughs> out of hand, you know. And then they wanted to be in the play, and then it was about, you know, hamburger tour coming to save, you know, the cabbage fields. And I, I don't know. It was, it, was, it was an experience. And then I, I wanted to open this up to other people. And I was thinking, like, oh, you know, everybody could have and live, you know, their, their life according to the advice of strangers. And uh, I met with um, Betaworks in, in New York, um, who, who funds Tumblr and, uh, I don't know, Bitly, all these big companies. And, and he's like, how did you get this meeting again? <laughs> when you're in the middle of the meeting, I'm like, I just cold called you. I just emailed you. He's like, right. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. So... I don't know. I guess what am I? I'm gonna wrap this up. My point do, is that okay? If I yeah, I don't know. I don't know where my timekeeper is. I'm good. Sweet. Um, so I, I guess my point is, you know, is just just like, what was it? I was looking at these leaves. <laughs> this is no point. But <laughs> but <laughs> I was thinking, you know, I was eating those little kale chips, which is like eating a piece of the earth, which is awesome. But I was thinking, what if you tie dyed potato chips? <laughs> <laughs> like artisan artisan potato chips and you could like dye them in like crazy tie-dyed colors I don't know <laughs> I don't know so <laughs> so I'll leave you with that there there you go thank you you guys are awesome okay
but n but now you're going to do your thing. Oh yeah, now it should. Okay, so this involves all of you. So I want to go to this little concrete area over here, and and have everyone face the house. But I want you to organize yourself according to color. So if oh, you're shirt. yeah shirt. No, I'm not racist. <laughs> <laughs> I might be from Indiana, but I'm not racist. <laughs> Of sure, thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> so, I think if everyone's up for it, I'd like to do that, and I'll get up in the upstairs, and I'll take a group portrait of everybody, and then we'll have a nice record of, of our time here. Okay, great, let's try it. <laughs> 